Hello, friends. This is Evangelist Scott Pauley. I'm so happy that you are joining our broadcast today. Several years ago, when we first began the Enjoying the Journey broadcast, we started with my favorite book of the Bible. I've adopted it really as my life's study on the book of Philippians. And the theme, of course, of that great book is the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, truly, it is the, the Bible treatise on what it means to enjoy the journey. Now we're thrilled to share this anniversary series with you again in the hopes that God will use it in your life to help you learn to enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ at whatever stage you happen to be on on life's journey. I trust that these studies from the Word of God today will refresh your spirit and renew your strength for the days ahead. God bless you as you listen. many years, I have been collecting epitaphs. Now, you know what epitaphs are. They're uh, the little one line that is allowed on a grave marker. Uh, this is your whole life boiled down to one statement, one phrase. I've thought so much about what I want my epitaph to be someday. The truth of the matter is, most of us will not write that for ourselves. It'll be the testimony we leave behind. I've been collecting epitaphs for years, and recently, I ran across a, a beautiful one one that I want to add to my collection, and in fact, I want to make it a prayer for my life. Charles Spurgeon said that he observed a certain tombstone. It was a tombstone for a woman who died at about age 80, and he said the epitaph on this one tombstone powerfully affected him. It simply said, who after a happy and grateful enjoyment of life died. What a statement! who after a happy and grateful enjoyment of life died. Now, if Jesus doesn't come, we're all going to die. The question is, are you going to die happy in Jesus? In the words of the Apostle Paul, are you going to finish your course with joy? I'd love for it to be said by my children or grandchildren someday uh, that Dad lived a happy and grateful life, truly that he enjoyed life. Well, I want to tell you in the authority of the Word of God, that I believe God designed the Christian life to be enjoyed. And the enjoyment is not the enjoyment of things or even of people. The enjoyment is the enjoyment of God, learning to enjoy Jesus along the journey. Now that brings us to our study in the book of Philippians. Now, for many weeks, we've been studying, walking through this beautiful book of Christian joy. Early on in our study, I made the statement that there are at least 17 references to joy in the book of Philippians. I still stand by that statement, but I need to correct myself. You know, no one's perfect except for God. And there's no perfect statement about anything unless it comes directly from the Scriptures. And I have discovered that there is actually an 18th reference to joy. I don't know how I missed it as I went over this book again and again, but it's found in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 16. A one reference to joy that I've missed, but I don't want to miss. And I don't want you to miss it. In Philippians 2.16, the Apostle Paul said, "...holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain." This is beautiful. But this reference to joy is not a reference to present joy. It's a reference to future joys. It's a reference to the joy that Paul wanted to have on the day he stands before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but that's the one that matters. That's the one that really counts for all of eternity. When I stand before the Lord, I want to have the joy of hearing Him say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to have the joy that day of having crowns to cast at the feet of Jesus. I want the joy of knowing that my life counted for Christ and for eternity. I want the joy of seeing souls there that I've led to Jesus. I want the joy of knowing that I gave my life to something that truly mattered for the Lord and for souls. I know that's what you want as well. And so I want to submit to you today that the way to enjoy the journey is to live for that day, for the last full and final joy, for the joy that will last forever, the joy that we'll enter into when we see Jesus face to face. We've come now in our study to the last chapter in the book of Philippians, to Philippians chapter 4. I've written in the margin of my Bible across Philippians 4, the secrets of a happy day. Indeed, I think all of the secrets to a happy Christian life are found in Philippians chapter 4. But permit me to give you this list under this heading. I'd like to talk to you about how to stay happy in Jesus. Not how to get happy in Jesus, 
how to stay happy in Jesus. I don't know about you. The difficult thing for me is not getting right with the Lord. It's staying right with the Lord. It's not getting my soul happy, but it's keeping my soul happy in the Lord Jesus because so many things pull and press on you in life. So many realities around you every day compete with the reality of Christ within. And so we've got to learn how to continue, how to go on in this joyful Christian journey. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 4 simply says this, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Could I draw your attention to two words? And no, it's not the word rejoice, though it's found twice in that little verse. The words are always and again. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Well, what did he mean by always and again? Well, always is an extent. In other words, through all of time, through every circumstance, with every person with whom I have to deal, rejoice in the Lord always. In other words, the Lord's joy doesn't just work when you're in church. It's going to work today on your job. It's going to work in your home. It doesn't just work on happy days. It works on days of tragedy and sadness. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Why say it again? Well, if always is a word of extent, again is a word of emphasis. The Holy Spirit says through the pen of the Apostle Paul, don't forget to rejoice again and again and again. Remember that joy is a choice. And so if you're going to stay happy in Jesus, you don't choose it once. You must choose it every day. In fact, you must choose it many times throughout the day. One of my spiritual heroes is a man by the name of George Mueller. I've never met him except through his writings. I'm looking forward to meeting him someday. But George Mueller wrote something long, long ago that has made such a profound impact on my life. In college, I was exposed to this little article called Soul Nourishment First. And in it, George Mueller said this. He said, the first thing to be concerned about, speaking of every morning, every day, was not how much I might serve the Lord or how I might glorify the Lord, but how I might get my soul into a happy state and how my inner man might be nourished. He goes on to say that his service and his life all grew out of the overflow of this happiness in the Lord. And the key words to me of George Mueller were these, a happy state. It's not a happy moment. It's not a happy event. It's a happy state. And I want to submit to you that is the genuine Christian experience. That is the victorious Christian life. It's the secret of staying happy in Jesus. I want to encourage you to read Philippians chapter 4. Meditate on it. And over the next few episodes, I look forward to sharing with you these beautiful secrets on how to stay happy in Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are grateful you've joined us for this study today. If you love the book of Philippians, be sure to visit our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and download the audiobook of Philippians. Scott also has a full sermon series through Philippians that we believe will be an encouragement to you as well. And until next time, may the joy of Jesus help you enjoy the journey.